Hey guys, James from Sticky Manufacturing. Today I'm gonna to show you a step-by-step -step installation guide on this upgraded clutch line for this 350Z. Now this will work on a 370Z, G35, and G37 as well. And the best thing about this is it eliminates the clutch damper, which gives you a much faster shift and re removes that spongy feel when you let the clutch out. It kind of delays the engagement. So it's gonna speed up your shifts. It's a great improvement. To pretty simple installation too, but this is a steel braided Teflon coated line uh, with a heat shield on it. it. Comes with all the fittings and everything you need to make this installation a breeze. So let's get at it. All right, so a couple ways you can start this. First step, we're gonna get this thing in the air, pull this wheel off. We gotta remove the back side of this fender liner to get access to where the line comes down through from the master cylinder up here. All right, so now we gotta get this fender liner out of the way. A couple screws holding it on here and some clips. We got two Phillips head screws out here. And then a couple of these body clips. So as you can see, this is the clutch damper right here. So this is the piece that we're gonna eliminate and remove. This line comes down here, it goes through this block and then the line twists around and goes all the way down to the slave. So first step we're gonna do is disconnect this from the slave and then work our way up, removing the line as we go. All right, so in this case, while we're doing the line, we're gonna replace this slave cylinder. It's an original slave cylinder. So it makes a lot of sense if you guys are doing this line install and your slave hasn't been replaced in a while to just bang it out while you're in here since we're gonna be have to bleed the system afterwards. Uh, it just makes sense to start with a completely fresh system from the master cylinder down. So we're gonna take this slave off and get the line unhooked and start working our way up the line. All right, so we're gonna crack this line loose. It's a 12 mil banjo bolt holding this on. And it's tight. So, you can put a drain pan under here because there's a little bit of fluid that's going to leak out, but not a ton if you don't have one. Probably just soak it up with a rag. But essentially, you're going to drain the whole master cylinder in the process and Again, while you're at it, it's good to start with fresh fluid, top to bottom. We're not gonna be reusing any of these fittings or lines that we're removing right now. You can see factory slave cylinder. Now when replacing this, make sure you put something that's quality OEM on. There's a lot of really cheap aftermarket ones, but you can see this thing's worn pretty good. It's probably an original from the looks of it. As you can see, we got the brand new slave now going back on.
All right, so from here, we're gonna have to disconnect this short line that goes from the sleeve to the chassis mount here with this hard line. So we're gonna take this, the 10 mil brake line fitting. We have to thread it out of the top of this and then we pull this clip out to release this whole line. Everything on this car is quite a bit rusty, so it makes it a little more challenging, but if you use the right kind of wrench on this, a line wrench, it has a little extra bite. You don't have to worry about stripping it out like you would on a, uh, using a regular wrench. And that's basically what I mean. So it closes around, lets you slip the line through. A lot better for this type of fitting. All right, so once you move that line, we're not gonna be reusing this, so you can just kind of bend it out of the way. And then we're gonna pop this clip out. There we go, that's what the clip looks like. The line just pulls out. Then we can totally remove this factory line. And we're not gonna be reusing any of this. So now we're gonna remove the next chunk of line, which there's another 10 line fitting right here, and then this 10 mil bolt that's holding this bracket on. So we're gonna get the line off here first and then keep working our way up. All right, and then you can remove this whole chunk of factory line. And now we're gonna do the line from the top of this block. All right, that line's removed. And that's the block. All right, so now we're on to the last section of the line, which is in here by the master cylinder. It hooks onto the front of the master cylinder. So it's gonna be hard to get a camera angle down in here, but the line hooks to the front of the master and then runs through. It's a short piece. It's the only part left that we haven't removed. As you can see, that's the line down there. This is the biggest pain in the butt of this whole job, just getting down in there and getting that thing loose. But I'm not gonna be able to film that just because there's no room. But well, we'll get that line off and then start the reverse and put everything back on the new sicky line and go from there. All right, so you can see the line runs up here. There's a little clip here, so we're gonna pop that out. And then you can kind of just bend it as you go and pull it out and it'll kind of straighten itself out. You're gonna work it down through this. Makes it a little easier if you get the grommet out of the way too. Use the combination of bending up here and pulling new and eventually it'll come out. And that's it for the stock system. All right, so the sticky line goes back on. It's pretty self-explanatory. This heat shield end goes down onto the slave. There's a big hole right below the master. So this 90 goes up and bolts down with the banjo bolt provided by Siki to the top of the master. And you're gonna route this down. This end comes out following the same path as the OEM line right to the slave cylinder and use the banjo bolt there as well. Make sure you put both washers on each side. Uh, just to demonstrate real quick, this is what your washer installation should look like on the banjo bolt. You're gonna have one washer, the bolt, 
then the other washer like that, and then this would go onto the slave. So we're gonna start the slave end and work our way up. All right, so I'm gonna get the line in here, get this banjo bolt started. Might have to twist things around a little bit, but take your time, make sure it's threading in right. All right, once you get the finger tight, before we tighten this down, we're gonna route the hose out over top of this subframe here. Make sure it's not twisted or kinked. You definitely don't want to kink the hose because there's a Teflon liner inside of it. So if you bend that hose, you're going to compromise its ability to keep the fluid in the line. All right, so now that we got that hooked up, we're going to run this up. And ideally, see how this is curling back? That's the way we wanted to go because it's going to actually go right on top of the mask. So we're going to go up through this hole. Just push the excess up right now. There's going to be a little bit more, but we use that later for securing it. And then you go to the top and hook it up with the other supplied bolt from Siki. All right, so we're going to take the Siki line, get the banjo on. So we drop that banjo bolt down in there, and then you just got to make sure you get this washer underneath when you set it onto the master cylinder. The banjo bolt has a 14 mil head size on it, so you're just gonna use a 14. You can either use a wrench or a socket. When you tighten this down, make sure you, you can control the rotation of the line around the master cylinder. So we wanna position it where it's not gonna interfere and rub with anything. So just be careful of that. And these types of fittings, you're only gonna get it snug and then about a quarter turn. You can easily over tighten these and all you're trying to do is create that seal on that crush washer so no need to muscle it. All right, so now we're gonna secure the clutch line working our way down. So we're gonna try to mount it right here to this original bracket, but I'm gonna put a bit of a little slack in it so it stays off the edge of this hole up here. If you push up on it a little bit, it centers itself out and it's not actually rubbing on anything up there. All right, now we're gonna move on to securing the rest of the line. You can actually push most of this out this way. And we're gonna secure it. All this gets covered up by the fender liner. So we're just kind of keep it from moving around. All right, last step, we're gonna tighten this 14 mil on the lower banjo bolt that hooks to the slave. And keep in mind, we're gonna pay attention to the location of this line and position it so it's not contacting anything and it's got plenty of clearance to anything like your exhaust system. Same thing, don't ever tighten this, but make sure you snug it up and go about a quarter to turn or so. There we go. All right, so lastly, you're gonna reverse the removal of this fender liner, put that back in place. Then you're gonna wanna fill the master cylinder up and we're gonna bleed the clutch out. We're not gonna cover all that because that's kind of basic stuff at this point, but uh, reverse everything out make sure you check for leaks and then you're good to go, installation complete. So that's a wrap on the Siki clutch line install. As you can see, it wasn't terrible. It took about an hour, including filming. So if you're not screwing around with a camera, probably get it done in 30, 40 minutes. Um, Make sure you got the right tools, take your time, have some patience, and other than that, pretty, pretty basic installation, and just take your car out and enjoy it. Uh, the crisp clutch is gonna be worth the extra hour you're gonna spend and knock it out in a weekend, but if you wanna check out the other products that Siki makes for your Nissan, make sure you log on to Siki.com or get in touch with one of our knowledgeable sales reps today. Thanks for watching.